Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Westland Petrel, the largest burrowing petrel still breezing on the New Zealand mainland, where their large size and aggressive temperament afford some protection from introduced predators. I hope you enjoy. Westland Petrels are large, all dark petrels that are quite chunky, being large bodies coming in at lengths of 50 to 55 centimetres and weights of 800 grams to 1.6 kilograms also possessing stout bills, which are pale yellow with a dark tip. They were actually discovered and described recently, being in 1945, when students of Barrytown School north of Greymouth came about the birds while conducting a school project. They noticed that the behaviour of the birds they observed was quite different than what would have been expected compared to other mutton birds of the area. They wrote to and even sent a dead bird to the then director of the Canterbury Museum, Roberts Fowler, for identification. He later visited the west coast himself a few weeks later, initially considering the birds to be a subspecies of the similar black petrel, although they were soon classified as a separate species. They are nocturnal like many other petrels, primarily feeding on fish and squid, as well as opportunistically scavenging fish from waste discarded by fisheries during their breeding season, as it also overlaps with the fishing season, switching back to their normal foraging habits at other times of the year. They generally capture prey by surface seizing, although they will sometimes undertake pursuit plunging, being noted to dive to depths of up to 8 metres. They are also quite unique in being the largest burrowing petrel still breezing on the New Zealand mainland, being a key and prominent remnant of a unique ecosystem that has since been largely lost. Numerous species of burrowing petrels once bred in coastal and inland areas of both the main islands. However, predation, changes to the habitats, and impacts by people led to a complete removal of them from the mainland. They breeze in the same area where they did before human arrival, being only in a narrow area on the west coast, which is an 8km wide strip between Barrytown and Punakaki, which comprises forest-covered coastal foothills. The reason they have continued to survive is both due to their larger size and aggressive temperament, which afforded them more protection from predators that otherwise decimated the more passive and smaller birds. They also differ from other petrels in being winter breeders, with the nesting in burrows dug 1-2 to two metres in a hill size, often on a steep slope. They form long-term bonds, with birds laying a single white egg in May or June, with incubation taking place for 57-68 to 68 days. Around 4,000 pairs breed annually, with them being considered to be stable in number, although they still face quite a few threats. Birds, due to regularly following fishing vessels, have been observed to have been killed by both longline and trawl fisheries with statistics on the number of deaths likely being underestimated, with them being ranked as among the 10 most vulnerable species to suffer adverse effects of fishing mortality in the country. Threats on land are also present, with predation by stoats and rats being a prominent threat. Birds are also vulnerable even when flying to and from their breeding colony, with some occasionally colliding with power lines, and the grounding of birds around exposed lights has also been recorded and unfortunately underreported. Birds, while thousands of them being banded in order to monitor their breeding success and survival rates, still have little known about them. Studies are mainly conducted during breeding periods due to their small presence on land otherwise, and so much is still to be understood about them. Unrelated to this is that a festival is held annually near where they live in Punakaiki to celebrate the return of the petrels to their home, with the event being weekends long in April which includes live music, various entertainment activities and a local market, with the festival beginning with a viewing of the birds as they fly overhead to make their way to nests in the mountains at dusk. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Snares Island Snipe, the stockiest and most sombre plumaged member of their group, and are one of the few bird species in the country to have had little to no impacts from introduced predators due to their remote location. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's may be.